Hi, Orange Girl here with another scrapbooking process video for you. I am pleased to announce that I have been asked to join the Pretty Little Studio Design Team. And this is my first layout for the team. So um, I am applying some clear gesso to my background here because I am going to use some mixed media. And I already have made a mistake. So I've already failed. <laughs> and my failure was that as I was backing this cut file, I forgot to hit record. And so I have this giant cut file that says, hello, summer, and I've already backed it off camera. And I'll ex explain a little bit about it in just a moment. But what I'm doing right now is I am putting some foam adhesive behind the entire cut file because I want it to be pop up off the page. Okay, I want it to come up off the page that I'm going to put some mixed media on here in just a minute. So I used everything that you see in this whole entire process is going to come from Pretty Little Studios Chasing the Sun collection, except that orange paper on the E and the M, that is from Documented Life, the Documented Life collection. Um, I used to back these, I used 8x8 eight eight papers from the 8x8 eight eight paper pads of those two collections, mostly Chasing the Sun. So now I have pulled out one of the ephemera packs that you can get with this collection. It's um, a pack of tags, and they are called. It's called Fireflies Shipping Tags. Is the is what it? And I will link all of this below. I promise. And my thought was I would put a tag behind each of my photos. So they happen to have tags that match exactly what my letter, what I backed my letters with. So there's like a blue one that matches the blue of the O. There's kind of that yellow green one and so I put those where my photos are I put those like color tags behind it and then for my photo that's up at the top which I chose to make it a little bit bitter, bigger photo so it's a little bit more of my focus photo it's going to kind of be housed in between the the pink and the orange so I'm going to put pink and orange elements behind that photo so what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of going through and finding stuff that I want to layer behind my photos um, for this layout, I used the fly a kite die cuts and the photo shoot die cuts. So you saw me, I was cutting apart some of the um, frames, the photo frames, and I was putting some of those behind as layers. So you'll see more of that here coming up. So I now that my gesso is dry, I'm going to go ahead and apply some of my mixed media. What I'm using here is I'm using some distress oxides. And so I'm just swiping them across the page, just directly applying it, then adding a little bit of water and using my brush to kind of move, the, move it around a little bit. So I'm moving that paint around the page or the ink around the page. And the reason I can move the ink a little bit is because I put the gesso on. If I hadn't put the gesso on the page first, then I wouldn't have an opportunity to move that ink around very much because it soaks right into the back of the page. So if, if you're wanting this to look more like a watercolor, which is kind of what I was going for here, then you're going to want to apply water and also use gesso. Um, I use it for anything where I'm going to use very much water or anytime I want to be able to move any of the paints or ink in this case around the page. So right now all I'm doing is I'm making each of the stripes and I'm kind of putting them apart from each other. I use this kind of blue teal color. I think it's called peacock or something and then I added this other blue over the top because I didn't have the right color of distress oxide and so um, I just blended the two together and that worked out perfectly because I used the gesso I was able to blend them much better. Um, I, I was a little off on my the length of my um, stripes and so I'm just adding a little bit to the bottom there. So I, initially I didn't want them to touch very much and I knew I wanted them to blend together a little bit but I wanted to control the blend and so in order to do that I went ahead and I put them apart from each other and now I'm using water to kind of blend them together. And I would not be able to move the inks very much, uh, even with the water, if I had not applied that gesso first. So that's, that's why I, I applied that gesso and go to that extra step or whatever. So um, as you can see, I chose the colors from this. So I backed that cut file with the colors that I was going to use on my background as well. Or actually, to be honest, I picked out the colors for my background based on how I backed that cut file. 
Um, I will link the cut pile below. It is on a free file on the Pretty Little Studio page, so I will link that. Now I'm just, um, I can't remember if this is gesso or white acrylic paint. Both will work, and I can't remember what I used for this one. Just water it down a little and put some white splatters. Now you're going to see me set this aside again so and um, because it needs to dry. And so I'm going to set that aside and let it dry well while I finish up um, doing some gluing and things off um, without having it behind it. So I know where I'm going to put things because the cut file is so big, it's really easy for me to determine where I'm going to put everything. So I don't need to have that 12 by 12 paper in front of me to be able to do that. So I'm going to add some embroidery floss to each of my tags and I'm choosing the same colors um, that will go with the Hello Summer cut file. So there is going to be blue um, or green or pink or orange or whatever. I am cutting these tags down a little bit. They were a little bit bigger. They're perfect size for my photo that's at the top, but the photos, the two photos that are at the bottom are just a little bit smaller. And um, so I'm adding some embroidery floss to my tags and then I'm roughing up the edges. So that little heart tool that you see there, it's just a distressor. And I like to, I like to put a little distress to a lot of my things that I put on my layouts. It just gives it a little bit more texture, um, makes it more interesting to me. This is a 12 by 12 paper that's in the Chasing the Sun collection and it has a few, um, it's a cut apart, so it has a, um, uh, three by four cards on it that you can cut out. And so I used that kind of blue teal kind of color behind one of the photos and I'm adding a layer of orange behind that photo at the top. Once again, I needed to cut it down because those photos at the bottom are a little bit smaller. Um, I did cut this a little piece out here thinking I could use that as a layer, but I decided that it was just too small so you'll see me pull out that 8x8 paper pad again, and I'm just going to cut a piece from that to put another layer behind that photo. So basically, behind each of my photos, I have a frame. I've either used part of the frame or the whole frame, but I've cut those frames in half so they fit. Um, I've used a piece of pattern paper, and I've used a tag, and I think that's it behind each of the photos, so like three layers. Um, and now I'm gluing everything to itself. Once I glue it to itself, then I can move it around the page a little bit. It makes it, it's just, it's just a nice little step that I do often um, just to kind of make it a little bit easier to glue everything then down on the page after it's dry. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. And now my stuff is dry, so um, now I'm going to start doing the really fun part. So like I said, I had, I am using things from the Fly a Kite die cuts and the photo shoot die cuts to add some things to my page and I'm going to I pulled some words out that I thought fit the idea of the layout um, and then I pulled I think I mostly use hearts and flowers and there were lots of hearts and flowers that matched these same colors oh and then that one um, die cut that little die cut of a of a um, ice cream cone I had to use right on this page for sure, so I'm using that. So confession time, I'm pretty sure that I made this ice cream cone specifically for my daughter, specifically to take pictures so that I could do an ice cream summary layout because I thought I needed to do a summer layout because I wanted to use the cup file Hello Summer, and I thought, what speaks summer more than ice cream? So that, <laughs> I, I made her a big old ice cream cone and made her eat it so I could take a picture. So, <clears throat> as you can see, I'm adding pink to the areas of pink, I'm adding some yellow, or I mean some oranges to the area of orange, and so on, just trying to kind of keep those colors together. Sometimes I like to mix them up, but for this layout, I decided to kind of keep those things together. And you're just seeing me kind of sort through and see which things I want to add and what fits where. And I like that I, uh, at this point, I'm really liking that I popped up that cut file. Um, it, it adds spaces for me to put the flowers and things that are kind of peeking out from behind it, which I like. And I must be satisfied with what I have so far because now I'm going to start gluing. If you're someone that already has followed me for a while on 
YouTube, you'll know that gluing is usually my very, very, very last step. Some people are able to just glue as they go. I am not one of those people. <laughs> I have to have it all laid out and ready. And sometimes it'll still change a little bit as I'm gluing, but for the most part, I need to have it ready to go. So another thing, if you are new to my channel, please feel free to watch some other videos and decide if you'd like to just subscribe. Um, some things that you will see is I am going to start adding, as I'm gluing, I'm going to add some tangled thread. It's just some inexpensive thread that you would use in a sewing machine, and I add those um, on almost all of my layouts because I'm a little bit addicted to it. It um, just adds a pop of color. It adds some texture. just makes it more interesting to me. So I'm going to add similar colors behind each of these areas. So I'm going to do it a little bit um, behind the photos, and I might put a few a few bits of it behind some of my um, cut file and that kind of thing. But I'm going to match the colors. So blue behind blue behind the blue, pink behind the pink, and so on. Um, I don't remember if I said this or not, but behind my big photo up at the top, I'm kind of putting all of the colors, but mostly orange and, and um, pink. You'll see a little blue up there, but the rest of everything else is pretty uh, monochromatic, I guess, in that area. So I'm sticking with the same color. To add a little bit more texture to things, I am um, stapling those hearts together, so you can just see a little staple there. Um, and it just adds another little bit of interest, in my opinion. And so now this stage of my layout is pretty much gluing, adding tangled thread, having a little hissy fit right there because my tangled thread wasn't cooperating, <laughs> but I get it to work. Um, I had already glued down the Hello Summer, so that made it, I had to kind of pick up some of that to um, make, it, make it work, and that was not working out with my tangled thread. So I am typically putting the thread behind items. So like in the area where that flower is, I put a little bit of tangled thread. In the area where the hearts are, I might have put a little tangled thread and so on. Um, so yeah, so this changed a little bit. Like I didn't have Let's Go up there on my die cut or my um, cut file. Um, so some things do change as I, as I glue things down, but but I still have to be pretty set before I start gluing. Some might think that's a strength and some might think that's a fault. I think it's just the way I work. So as, as I got this all kind of done for the most part, I felt like it was still missing something. And um, on a lot of layouts, so that's why I'm kind of going through some of these die cuts again, because I'm like, I feel like it's missing some things. And so I'm, I think it needs more, but I also don't want to add more, much more, because it's pretty busy. There's a lot of color on the page. I have a lot of little details. I've got three photos, not just one. So, you know, there's a lot going on on the page, but I still feel like there's something missing. So I found this 12 by 12 paper. I think this one's called Face Painted, and it's from the collection. And so I cut out the center to save the center so that I wouldn't waste anything. And I use that as a border around the outside of my paper. And I are my layout and I really like that. I'm also using some of the inside to punch out my butterflies. So this, if you are not someone that follows me um, consistently, you might not know um, that I put butterfly, at least one butterfly on every layout that I um, make that involves my daughter. And I will uh, put a link to my reason why I do that. Um, I have another video, a process video that you can watch that it kind of explains why we we use a lot of butterflies around this place, and um, I will I will link that for you so that you can see that if that's something that you're interested in knowing more about. But um, so I punched, I used that same um, face painted paper, the inside of that, and I punched out some butterflies and added some uh, uh, foam adhesive underneath to kind of pop it up off the page. And last but not least, I'm gonna add a little journaling here it's not a big deal it's not really telling the story like I didn't say I made my daughter eat this ice cream so I could make this scrapbook page I said ice cream you scream we all scream for ice cream because that um, and there is always room 
Um, that is something my dad would always say, and my daughter is a lot like my dad in that manner. She loves ice cream. I mean, who doesn't for real, though? Um, and she, um, it fits it perfectly. So thanks a lot for stopping by, and I will see you in my next video.